All righty, and we're back. Um, two hours later, I'm I'm really slacking off. I, I wanted to go live two hours ago, but then I was trying some things, and I'm I'm having a lot of fun with this stuff. But uh, yeah, to, today we're gonna look at several things uh, for the next hour, and then I will have to go offline for a bit. Um, and then I will continue to, doing work tonight, I guess. So first of all, I I found my old uh, puzzle dependency graph which is um, something really, really kind of cool. Um, so basically, this is the one for Grim Fandango, and um, I also found some other ones here. And my cat, cat is meowing outside again. This is terrible. Um, so there, there's like the idea behind a, uh, a puzzle dependency graph. This one was actually not drawn by LucasArts, but by the guy. Uh, who put this up? Um, here's a, this is the one for Monkey Island. So the idea here is that you have multiple pa parts of the story. You have this can be rooms. Well, it should be rooms. Obviously, this this has to be rooms. This has to be parts. In in case of uh, in case of Grim Fandango, this is an official document. Um, you have years because it's structured by years. So first of all, when you do something like this, you have to structure it somewhere. Uh, in in my case, it's a rather short game, so the the puzzle structure is just the entire game. I don't really need a, I guess, uh, just for the game jam at least, it's gonna be short. Um, so it's pretty much just part one in my case, um, as we will see soon enough. And um, but yeah, the idea is you you have your rooms here. And then you uh, you basically do some you you you'll uh, basically explain how these items that you have can be used to solve a puzzle. So if you have a if you have a um, a sign with the shovel in Monkey Island Two in the beginning, then uh, you can take the uh, shovel from the sign. And then it tells you the big, big X. It's going to be used by the big X, which is all the way down here. So the whole thing goes straight from, from the beginning to the end. Um, and then there's also this, of course, you also use it to dig up a grave of uh, Largo's grandpa. Or I don't know if it was grandpa. I think it was his grandpa. Um, and basically... Everything is lined out in this little script, so in this little graph. Graph. Um, so oh my cat is really <laughs> probably can't even hear it, but it's really annoying me. <laughs> he's always hungry. It's it's terrible. He's uh, he's had lunch two hours ago. I can't feed him that often. Um, right. So so the point is, you you have some. Some overview of what you're actually doing, how the rooms are set up, where you can find the items, which room, um, the puzzles, what the puzzles actually demand. So in, in the case of Grim Fandango, you have like a more basic setup, actually. I kind of like this more complicated setup, to be honest, because it really makes you think and really makes you plan all the items. But this is how it was done for Grim Fandango, basically, the puzzle structure. You hire a driver, fake work order, reap soul. So I have all of that stuff in there, and then you have the location layout separately, um, which also works, I guess. But um, in, in my case, we're not doing it separate. I don't have the time for a separate room layout. I'd obviously do that with, um, with my tools that I have for my text adventure, for my interactive fiction. But in this case, well, we're going to do it similarly to how it's done here uh, in, in this graph, because I quite like that idea, to be honest. Um, so yeah, um, the tool of choice for me is Puzzlon. Um, that is basically, that's also why I'm in on Adventure on. This is one of their tickets, which I also find interesting. Um, apparently, he's working on the idea of having a sort of AI Illustrator. I don't know if that's his Illustrator. I'm trying to find out if this is something that actually exists already, or if because this looks beautiful. I have to say this looks for something that's AI drawn. This looks quite good. I can't zoom in, I guess. Um, but yeah, this looks quite 
quite amazingly good for i mean yeah obviously the the divering and stuff probably won't be real divering there's i can already tell there's definitely some uh some artifacting in here so uh i i doubt it's perfect you probably have to work rework it somewhat but uh the idea itself is kind of neat and i do kind of like working with ai sometimes and um creating something uh differently from there like polishing the work that the ai creates that it always kind of gives me ideas so it's kind of nice um also on the on the before i get get going with the uh so in this in this video we're going to do some uh, some puzzle design so this is actually my i did this for a last easter never released unfortunately never had the time to finish it might finish it by the end of the year um i had this idea for a like, nice little text adventure literacy literacy project for a little project for that um and the idea was basically a uh kind of like alice in wonderland uh, a person in, in this case the player falling down a, a rabbit hole and then you have to enter your name your your birth year and depending on what you enter as a birth year uh it will actually give you like different uh results as you fall down the rabbit hole it will like try to remind you of your childhood sort of so it's 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 a bit dynamic that uh, was my idea and then obviously there have to have a tutorial because it's a tlp game a text adventure literacy project so they have to have like this little tutorial thing and uh and then it, it was quite easy so at the bottom um of the rabbit hole I, in, in this case i actually use um this this yep this is this label here so this is a nice little language a nice little dynamic graphing language um i don't know why i can't okay that's weird oh, whoops that works okay um so oh that's the original oh, i copied this over i had it on my i found it actually on my github and i just copied it over it's uh, so probably an older incomplete version um so so yeah um in this case the 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 green ones are um basically i don't know how i i don't even remember how i did the coloring to be honest there's got to be a way to do the coloring right oh no those are actions never mind so the blue ones are the actions and the green ones are the um, conditions and i'm actually asking i was actually on the adventure on um issue tracker here because i was asking for the source code because <laughs> i i have this idea for an overarching ide for scum or skunk for my skunk engine and you stop calling it scum it's i mean it is basically th that but it's going to be far more advanced and um yeah obviously scum is also trademarked um but, but yeah the idea is that i want the source code for this so i can have an overarching ide and have like a puzzle dependency graph editor inside and um yeah it doesn't have enough actions to be honest like in, enough different things it has like conditions actions and like or and and so logic gates um it kind of needs more i feel because this definitely need, uses more here so yeah, this has a lot of stuff. Take an object, give an object, which I quite like. I quite like the way this is using, um, the way this is even using actions directly as a special item. But we'll have to do that with actions and conditions, so it's okay too. Just a bit, bit more wordy, but it should work. So anyhow, um, so we kind of accept the tutorial or decline the tutorial, then we find ourselves at the bottom of the rabbit hole and then uh, as a player we can look around obviously but to progress the game we have to search the rubble we have to pick up a bobby pin uh fashion the bobby pin into a lock pick and then we can use the lock the flimsy door uh that is actually not an item here i, I think i would make that an item to be honest um a separate item so a green thingy um 
But yeah, basically there's a flimsy door and we can either break the flimsy door, which gives us less points because it's a text adventure, they have point systems. Um, or we can lockpick the flimsy door, which gives us the, the higher score, obviously. And then we can enter the Hall of Song and then, uh, and then inside the Hall of Song is a different object. And uh, so but basically we're doing something similar right now. And then the next thing I have prepared is the characters. We're going to do that as a markdown file. Um, let make this larger. We can also see this rendered out. So okay. you can also see this being rendered out, which is probably what I'm going to do so people can read this better without me making it too big myself. Um, but this should be fine. Um, so yeah, that's that's this. Oh yeah, right. So the next thing, um, I've been working on the audio a bit. So um, he sent me, my, my composer sent me all his instruments as separate sound fonts. And I found this tool called Polyphone where I can load in a sound font. So we have actually loaded the Unison ID, HD sound font, um, which is pretty common in, in pretty much, it's between Unison on, and Fatboy. For most people who have a custom sound font in ScumVM, and I've pretty much decided on Unison for now. So, so um, the idea is that I replace here. I loaded in the first uh, samples from his sleigh bells instrument, and um, then I also added the sleigh bells instrument. And then down here. As a pattern, a preset, I, I added it to banjo actually. So the the when you play the banjo, you're actually playing back to sleigh bells. So yeah, that should be fine. That should work well. And um, it's it's still too low volume currently uh, when I do it in in ScumVM directly. But by default, it, it should really work. It just needs a bit more work. Um, right, where was I? Where's the friggin' file now? Um, sam there's samples. There's a lot of samples in this. I'm gonna ship the sound font with the game, so it's not like people people won't be able to. Like, they can experiment, obviously, when they go into ScumVM, they can make it sound differently. But the ScumVM version I'm shipping is will have this uh, sound font activated by default, and this is what it sounds like for the sleigh bells. Yeah, so that's another thing, and um, so that's pretty much it for what we are, what we're gonna do today. So now I'm going to the character sheet. We're going to make it short and sweet, just like this Grim Fandango one here. So we're just writing a line or two for, for the characters that we're using in the game. They even have, like, bone beavers. Um, it's not good. Okay, so they, they kind of introduce all the characters here. We're going to do that as well. So our main character is named Tuwin Bunbrush. And, um, right, so how do I do the EM brush? I never know how to do a longer brush. Okay. Whatever. Um, two wind bound brush is our main character. We'll actually call the player character here. Um, sweet, gentle, a bit naive. Being funny, sweet, gentle, a bit naive. Um, doesn't think a lot about herself. Right, so this is character one, and we have Mr. Turtle. Stuck up teacher. We'll call it Mayor Turtle. It's obvious, actually. 
Well, no, that's so obvious. Come on. <laughs> we don't need to add that. Stuck up teacher obsessed with Aristotle quotes. Um, that's with Aristotle quotes. What else? What else do we have about him? Um, not very caring. Um, I'd say. Not dependable, because as we will, as we will see, um, he's not gonna be dependable, or our poor two win. Um, then we've got of course Cobb. Um, Cobb is spider, common relief, Easter egg. Personality similar to everybody, everybody's favorite Cobb. Right. Um, what else do we have as a character? So I've been thinking. Um, originally I thought about adding like a, I, I will add a gorilla, but probably not as a character. Um. The animation budget that I have is rather low key, so um, my friend is is still busy animating the um, the character, which I will probably show off tonight, um, depending on how far he's come. Um, but um, but the I, I want to keep it like I would I don't want to use up too much of his time, so I will probably as a Second player character, I will have something like a fly or e. Um It could be similar actually to the mouse cursor in uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Um, Kuala Lumpur had a, like the mouse pointer as a as a literal um, fly. So we could do maybe something similar to that, except not the mouse cursor, but an actual player character. Um, I think for now I'll just log in fly. Uh, random encounter. Helpful. A bit arrogant. Calls himself Flying Ace and the Red Baron. There you go. So there we go. Um, and then we have uh, two pupils left, so we do have a monkey. And we have a hare, and we don't have names for these yet. So uh, the hare, fast reader and arrogant about it, doesn't actually retain any information. So he's reading, but he doesn't actually retain any information. And the monkey is a maths ace, but only when the um, algebra is banana based. Right. So that's our basic setup. Those are our characters. Um, obviously, aside of two and none of the characters exist yet. I, I am working on Mr. Turtle already, so um, Cobb as well, Monkey and Hare I haven't started at all. And since the fly is just going to be a few pixels, it, it, it should not be too much of a budget. Like, literally, it's going to be a couple pixels, and the wings are going to be some small grayish pixels. And then it just, like, it, it should be very easy to animate. It shouldn't even need to, like have different directions and stuff so yeah that's it for that um that was rather quick to be honest I'll, i think i'll make it a quickie because i i have to go somewhere still um yeah before before i leave that um 
before I leave this video and maybe start another recording later today. I don't know, if, uh, maybe I'll even merge the two videos before I upload them. Um, there's some news about the PlayStation 5 Pro. It still annoys me, this whole, this whole thing. I know it's kind of off topic, but it still annoys me. Um, the PlayStation, so Remedy actually talks about the PlayStation, talked about the PlayStation 5 Pro. And um, I mean, their engine is, uh, what was it called, Northlight? Their 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 engine is is really beautiful. Um, I've I've played Control on my Xbox Series X. It's beautiful. It's it's fluid. It's it looks gorgeous. The light effects. Uh, it's everything I want in a modern uh, ray traced game. Um, like the global illumination is really good in this game. Um, so they they obviously know what they're talking about. And um, but the the thing is, this is also kind of interesting, by the way. They have like 2D uh, monochrome art for this. Um, so so yeah, the 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 point is they know what they're talking about. And now they're saying that uh, Alan Wake 2 on the PlayStation 5 Pro will actually be um, an 864p game. That's gonna be the native internal resolution. And then they, they trust that the PlayStation 5 Pro can upscale it to 4K. But uh, obviously, it, obviously, it's still going to be 864p uh, uh, internally. Uh, it, it's it's going to look beautiful, no doubt. Um, I've, I've tried um, FSR before, um, but it's, it's, it's still a difference between this and native. AI, AI can upscale, but they can't add like detail that doesn't exist in the first place. So um, it's gonna look like that missed free video I did uh, last night, where it's probably gonna be like areas that are gonna be mushy, and unless they take really good care of not making it look mushy and muddy, um, but but yeah, it's kind of like. Everybody was saying, like, or not everybody, but a lot of fanboys were saying, oh, the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to blow every gaming PC out of the water. But gaming PCs can still do higher resolutions. They can at least do 1080p native without any, uh, without any upscaling. And, um, and, yeah, and, yeah, this is without ray tracing, too. Like, the game will be in 60 FPS, but it will be... Uh, it will be at 864p internal resolution, and it won't be ray tracing. So, this super powerful console that is being sold for almost a thousand bucks, it doesn't seem too powerful from what I can tell. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just the gist of it. Um, I'm not too positive. I'm I'm gonna wait for the PlayStation 5 Pro to hit the bargain bin, and then I might get one. I have a ton of PlayStation 5 games already that I bought or pre-ordered um, before I ended up actually switching to the to, to the Xbox Series X because I already have that one. Um, but um, I foolishly bought a lot of PlayStation 5 games without owning one. But uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna spend all that money on a PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm gonna wait until this actually hits a, a decent level and. Uh, and since I'm more into classic art myself, if I ever wanted to develop for any of these consoles, what I would really love is for some new kind of index color mode. Uh, an index color mode that is like more than 256 colors, at least 512 colors, um, because I think that's still manageable. Um, and 512 would probably look really good. Um, and Or maybe like some sort of texture mode where where you have an alpha alpha blending and all that stuff but then you also have the option of having one just one or two colors or 10 colors or whatever set to index mode so kind of a mixture would be kind of nice if that's possible so if anybody could build me an api like that that would be awesome i i would love to program for something like that a system where you can a lot is my favorite character. I would love for a system where you can basically have index colors on demand, so you can do 
color cycling because color cycling oh yeah I, I wanted to show that one off i actually i actually kind of um i took one of mark ferraris which is the guy who made um all the art for loom and most of it for secret of monkey island um he, he kind of got uh lucas arts to um to embrace divering and um to make scum compress with divering um so so that guy had like a lot of art and i took one of his art pieces and i kind of cropped it into my engine and uh yeah and then i um since i actually found the original deluxe paint files that he made um all the color cycling information was in there and uh um yeah i took his it's not the exact same speed because the speed i i couldn't read from not in graphics too i, I used graphics too because um azaprite doesn't actually um support color cycling but as far as i i, I saw in graphics too maybe it was because it's too it was too late last night but i didn't see an option where you could see the delay um directly in a number sort of thing but uh yeah that's basically what this looks like um what color cycling i i know i've shown it off before but this is what color cycling actually looks like when it's applied um to an actual background and i think it's really beautiful it's not perfect i probably didn't i, I probably cycled some colors wrongly um maybe i didn't even add all the correct colors because this part here seems sort of off um but yeah it, it's kind of cool to see this color kind of color cycling at all um i might actually color cycle the mouse cursor like in monkey island too which is easy to pull off um but yeah, all that color cycling information is actually when we look cycle. So I just set up these cycles. This is just the color that I, I saw in graphics. Um, we can also look at this in graphics. Uh, provided I can find it. Do, 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 do. There it is, Coral LVM. There it is in all its beauty. Um, actually scale. Um, so when I go in here, I turn on cycling. And this is kind of what the original looks like. Uh, okay, it's it's not quite the same compared to mine. Uh, mine is cropped, obviously, so it's it's larger to begin with. And uh, yeah, the, the pixels are kind of not the same, obviously. And this part actually, that's interesting. My part, okay, it's 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 just not a perfect match. But I I did take all the uh the cut the information from out of this one, and then I just looked at the the indexes down here. Maybe I didn't even take the right indexes completely. Cause, oh yeah, I didn't see that this one actually sixty three. Did I? No. 64. I think this was missing completely, is it? Oh no, it is 63. Never mind. But yeah, um in theory it works. It's it's not looking as beautiful as here, of course. Um, which is also mainly because the 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 resolution is completely different, of course. So this is much more zoomed in. It's cropped, so I think it's rescaled as well a bit but in theory it works so it's just quite nice to see that it works at all um in action and i will use that a lot in in my finished game so yeah that's just that's just it for now it's just it for this video um see you later today